Welcome back to Energy TV. Before we completed our work on the McCabe study, I caught up with a few of the speakers at various conferences to ask them what they thought about the McCabe complexity value and how they thought it helped developers. Here's what they had to say. In my experience, McCabe's maps directly to bug count. If you see a class with a very high McCabe cyclomatic complexity value, it will have bugs in it. I've, ne I've never seen that rule broken. I've seen it in organizations large and small. If you're not running McCabe's, you're doing yourself a disservice. Preferably, I'd like to see teams with extremely low cyclomatic complexity values. Now, it depends on how you calculate them. If you're talking about per method, I want to see numbers that are just sillily low, uh, because I'd like to see really short methods, and I like to see um, uh, not a lot of matches. So we're talking two, three, four uh, on, the, on the metric. Um, so if you're coding well, and it's not, it's really not hard to create small methods with these, with this level of complexity, if you're working in a greenfield system. So if you're coding well, uh, I think your design problems are going to be bigger than what McCabe's going to tell you. Um, because you can have lots of small methods and lots of small classes and, and everything well structured and still have design problems, but McCabe's not going to tell you anything about that. Uh, however, it can be used as a diagnostic. If you're coming into a situation where, uh, it's a legacy code, or you're wondering where, you know, you're feeling masochistic and you just want to know where everything is absolutely terrible. You can go and run it and then say, oh my god, we've got a 60 on the McCabe, and then feel good and brag about it to your friends at the pub and you know, talk about how beleaguered you are. But honestly, I think that de developers who are working in a system, they, it's pretty easy to tell when you've got a bad method. It's going to have a thousand lines of code and nesting that goes out, you know, goes past the right side of the screen. Um, so, I think McCabe's interesting. Um, I, don't, I personally don't use it that much. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent uh, indication of complexity. So it's a, a very helpful uh, number, if you will, on um, legacy code bases because it can give you uh, an indication of perhaps areas of risk where you may want to spend more time testing. The, uh, the industry standard is if you have a method with uh, more than 10 paths through it, it's deemed complex and there's a high there's a high possibility there's a defect in there. If it's not there, it could be introduced when someone changes it. So it's just a great number for indicating risk. Um, if you're starting from greenfield development, it's a good number to kind of monitor and make sure you don't go beyond some threshold like 10 or some people actually say 5 is a better number. Whatever the number is that fits for your organization. But it's just a, it's a very good uh, risk indicator. How's that? The, the can be used on uh, code statements to determine when it would be good to have reviews. Um, if something is below it, maybe you don't need to review it. Uh, maybe you don't need to think about refactoring. When you get above the complexity index, you should be looking at it for, for review or refactoring or something like that. I'm not a big code base measurer. I, you know, my best measurement system is my gut. But the one measure that I do use fairly frequently is McCabe complexity. And I use it mostly to estimate how many tests I would need to design or cover some to cover a method with a certain McCabe complexity. So if the complexity is 20, then I know I'm going to have to write at least 20 tests to test that method thoroughly. So it gives me a quick idea of how much time or effort it will take to add tests to some existing code. It's actually really, really useful, which is rare to say from so many metrics that were developed so long ago. McCabe comes to us from the 70s, and it's really a measure of the number of independent execution paths through, at the time, a function that it works perfectly well for a method now. The really cool thing about McCabe right now is, and a lot of developers don't realize this, it tells you how many tests you have to write to fully test all the branches in a method. It's extremely useful because you create some code and you run McCabe on it, it tells you these are the number of tests that I have to have to get 100% code coverage in all the branches of this method. That's extraordinarily useful. Uh, and we use it all the time on our projects. In fact, we uh, at ThoughtWorks, a lot of our projects, especially Java projects, where this is a little more typically done, uh, we capture that metric as part of the continuous build process and we graph it over time. We have these fascinating profiles of projects where as you approach a release, the McCabe number skyrockets because everybody's in a hurry and they're taking less care about writing their code. But immediately after release, it goes back down because you take time to refactor out some of the bad things that you did as you were hurrying to get to the release. 
So you get this interesting almost sine wave pattern of McCabe over the lifetime of the project. We actually have some McCabe graphs that go back three years on projects. That's a fascinating metric to look at over that period of time. Just that one snapshot of the, one of the characteristics of your code base. Okay, so just to follow up then, um, when you say the, the McCabe metric spikes um, just before release, have you uh, compared those spikes with sort of um, bugs found in release? Absolutely, time? and you get more bugs the higher that spike is. There's a really strong correlation between bugs and psychometric complexity and uh, high psychometric complexity and difficulty in testing. Those things go absolutely hand in hand. There's a direct correlation between those things. Uh, that's one of the things that test-driven development helps you with because it almost forces you to write much simpler methods. And so if you look at a project that's religiously done TDD, their psychometric complexity numbers are much, much lower than projects where testing is done after the fact or no testing is done at all. So it's amazing what, the, what a difference it makes. So, it appears our experts agree that the McCabe value is a good one to use, which correlates with our findings as well. We feel that probably the best return on using the McCabe value would be on um, legacy projects concentrating on high value files with um, core business functionality to look for problems immediately. Well, we hope this has been an insightful video cast. Until next time, goodbye from Energy TV.